Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. I am going to be incredibly vulnerable with you today. And that's not even dressed up as Miss Frizzle. Um, I have been debating whether or not to give this sermon for mm, the last 12 hours. Um, it's not the sermon that I had planned, but it's one that I think we need to hear. And it's one that I think I need to say. Um, y'all are like, she's going to quit. She's not quitting. The others are you're like, darn, she's not quitting. Um, I went to diocesan convention yesterday, and um, as many of you know, I don't necessarily play well with big boys. I know that comes as a shock to many of you. Those of you for whom that's a shock, welcome to St. Anne's. It's great to have you here. We hope you love the church. Um, but uh, the bishop preached an incredibly powerful, um, heart-wrenching sermon about the importance of change. In fact, we even got these little pins that say a different kind of church, the Episcopal Church in West Missouri. Not cool. I mean, that's, that's a really meaningful, cool thing, I thought. Um, we even got little pins, little lapel pins that said the same thing. We're, we're a different kind of church. And I was incredibly moved, and I was like, yes, this is what we need to hear. We need a kick in the pants. We need to change. We need to walk into the future um, because change is coming. In fact, change is already here. Whether we like it or not, change is happening. And I don't think that change is a bad thing. I really, truly don't. Um, so I'm all pumped. We are, we are going to do this. We are going to change. And it did strike me that we were sitting in the middle of a cathedral and there's gold stuff everywhere and all of us are dressed in our really fancy gear. I mean, not like Miss Frizzle, mind you. Um, but like our robes and our fancy hats and we've got all this stuff and there's gold stuff everywhere but I was like but we are talking about change and change is happening and I felt like Greta Thunberg I was like yes we are changing things and then I felt like Greta Thunberg because we went into our meetings and we didn't change we didn't change. And it makes me think of this gospel. Because Jesus gives us this parable to point out to us how ridiculous we truly are. Um, because this is church in some ways. We've got these, I mean, Jesus is being pretty harsh here. Jesus is saying, you Pharisees, that's us. You religious groups, you think you have it all. You sit in your robes and robes and your fancy clothes and your rows and all your stuff, and you tell us how self-righteous you are, and then you tell yourself how self-righteous you are, and you feel really good, and then you walk away, and you are not justified. Guys, we need to hear this. Sitting together, telling everyone in this group that we are good is not enough. Standing up together saying, isn't it great how great we are? We literally watched a video where we talked about how great we are to each other. Yeah, we did. And nobody there thought it was ironic. We sat together and we talked about how fantastic we are. And we felt really good about it. Because are we great? We're great. We're great. I mean, we're great. It's like me sitting around telling myself what a great preacher I am. You're a great preacher, Meg. No. That's not the point. We are called to be different. We are called to be a different kind of church. We are called to be the tax collector. We are called to welcome the tax collector and say, you know what? It's okay, because we're all sinners, and we're all messed up, and we're all figuring out, but we're going to do it together, because together is how we get there. It is not about sitting together and saying how self-righteous and wonderful and justified we are. 
It was about sitting together and saying, oh my gosh, we are screwed up. We are messed up. But we're in it together. And we're going to do this together. And I was super excited because we were going to be a different kind of church. And then we sat in a meeting and we debated things that don't mean anything. We debated money and how much more money to give to things. We don't have any money. And that's literally me sitting in my vestry being like, guys, um, I know we don't have any money, but Meg has a lot of needs. Like, have you seen her hair? (laughs) Have you seen her rock her vestments? It's not a pretty thing. Have you seen her car? Her poor little roach got rear-ended this week. That roach has the worst luck, and I'm not giving it up. I love my roach. Is that what we're called to do? No. No, that is not what we're called to do. And Jesus calls us today to be like, wait, stop. You are not self-righteous. You are not justified. You are a sinner as much as anyone. This is a hospital for sinners, not a country club for winners. I mean, I think we're all winners because I'm a school counselor, and I'm like, I love you all. We're all winners. And all the teachers are like, shut up, Rhodes. Don't encourage them. And I'm like, but we're all great. No, we're not. We're messed up and we're broken. And you may have noticed that I'm dressed up as Miss Frizzle today. If you aren't familiar with that show, it's um, The Magic School Bus, which was a cartoon that first came out around the time that I was growing up. Um, There's been a reboot of it, um, which is also phenomenal. But Miss Frizzle is a science teacher. She's the teacher for this fifth grade class. I think... And, like, all the teachers are like, well, I wish I was my class because they've got, like, killer numbers. She's got, like, what, six kids? I mean, I'd be a great teacher, too, if I had six kids in my class. Um, But Ms. Frizzle is known for taking them on these crazy um, field trips to learn about things. And they're usually science-based. And if you haven't watched it, watch it. It's a super fun show. Um, But... um, one of Miss Frizzle's lines is, um, and I gotta take chances, make mistakes, get messy. And guys, yesterday, I didn't say anything. And normally, if you hang out at Dias and Convention with me, you know at some point I'm gonna stand up and be a jerk. Because that's what I do. I can't keep my mouth shut for very long, but I didn't. Because I'm tired. I'm tired. I've done this for years. And I'm tired. I work two jobs. And the reason I work two jobs is because I have to work two jobs to be able to say the things that I say. And I'm tired. I'm tired of fighting. And you want to know what? We feel the same way in all sorts of areas. Don't we feel the same way about climate change? We're tired. How is there a huge mass conspiracy of 97% of our scientists out to get this small minority of really wealthy men who make a lot of money? That's a pretty significant conspiracy theory. We're tired. We're tired of arguing with you. We're tired of arguing that everyone should love each other and that all people are humans and should be treated equally. I'm tired of having to say that. I'm tired of going to these conventions and saying the church has to change. And us going like, well, no, we don't. No, we don't. We're good. We're good. The 50s are going to come back. We'll just keep, you know, begging people to do estate planning. Any here, anyone here want me to preach to you about estate planning? No. Because here's your estate planning. You have kids and you have grandkids and we have really expensive colleges and We really need help sending our kids to college. So chances are, if you have any money left, if you have any money left, you're probably going to leave it to your kids, your grandkids, or somebody to help them make it through, right? And I want you to. Because that's what it means to be family. That's not a bad thing. I'm not going to preach to you about estate planning just so we can limp along and not change. I'm not going to do it because it's not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is to be a different church. The right thing to do is to look in the face of the coming storm and see it as opportunity. 
Because guys, we're in a storm. Is the storm scary? Or is it a chance for renewal? And I ask that question not of the church only. I ask it of our lives. I ask it of our nation. I ask it of our world. Is this storm scary to you? Is it scary? And if it's scary, can we reframe that as an opportunity for renewal? Because we need renewal. And we need to be okay with the storm because guess what? It's that storm that causes us to change. No one ever changes because it feels good. When we are called to change, what do we do? We get scared and we cling to what we know and we ask for any opportunity to not change it. We sit in a room and we talk about estate planning. We sit in a room and we say, just trust that the people who have been killing the church for the last 50 years are going to be okay if you give them more money. So you all give us more money, please. That's not going to cause us to change. The president saying it we don't need to worry about climate change. We now are producing the top amount of gas and fuel. No, we're not. The dinosaurs died a long time ago. They're not making any more. Guys, the storm is here. Are we afraid or is it a chance to be renewed? I think, I really truly believe it's a chance for us to see renewal. But I realized yesterday when I didn't say anything, because in my family the joke is that I'm Miss Frizzle, because when we went to Ireland I took a new bottle of conditioner and just travel size. It was terrible. It didn't work. If you've seen any of the pictures or the video of anything from Ireland, there's a reason that my nickname in my house is Miss Frizzle. And so it's a joke that I'm Miss Frizzle. But I realized yesterday when I came home after being exhausted and worn out and I have my cup of coffee and my cookie and I'm praying because I don't know what else to do. Um, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to do it. Um, has anyone seen the show, Magic School Bus? Do you know who Arnold is? Arnold... <laughs> Arnold is this little boy who never wants to go on these field trips. Arnold is really safe, and he's like, oh, my God, it's another field trip. Please do not. We're all going to die. And um, Arnold wants no part of any of this. I realized yesterday that I was Arnold. Even when a friend of mine had come to me and asked me, he's like, I need you to speak out about this. And I was like, I'm not talking. I'm not talking. I'm tired of talking. I'm not going to that mic today. I realized that I wasn't Miss Frizzle. I was Arnold. We are not called to be Arnold. No matter how exhausted and tired and frustrated and overwhelmed we are, we are called to take chances, make mistakes, and get messy. And so, after a cup of coffee and a cookie, it was gluten-free, I'm here to, today to tell you guys it's time. It is time. The storm has come and change is here, whether or not we like it. And it's not bad. In fact, it doesn't need to be scary. It is a chance for change. And guess what? God is calling us to that change. And God is tired of saying, little nudges, hey, have you considered that maybe things going extinct is a bad idea? Guys, have you considered that maybe inequality is a bad idea? Guys, guys, have you considered that maybe you should preach the gospel instead of wear fancy clothes all the time? We don't have time. God has given up the nudges. We don't have time for nudges anymore. There is no space for nudges, and there is no time for being exhausted and tired and giving up. We don't have time to be Arnold. You and I are called to take chances, make mistakes, get messy. Thank you. You don't get those very often in Episcopal Church. I appreciate it. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you.
all that is, you know.